Hello friends, welcome back to the bench. Don't you hate it when people get sick and they still get in the office um, for whatever reason? Maybe no PTO, no sick leave or whatever, but what they do is they just spread the disease, right? And making everybody in the office sick. Um, I'm not a big fan of that. And I have fallen ill. I've got, um, I don't know, like cold, nothing too serious. I got slight fever and I'm coughing a lot and uh, running nose and all that fun stuff. And I was thinking, I'm uh, sure I can push through and uh, make a session today. But after um recording a video for my main channel for black horse repairs channel i'm kind of spent and i don't i don't think i can do it however what i can do is um share with you guys the the plan for the next session and normally i just devise a plan and i just execute on it but this time I'm gonna share the plan with you guys, and perhaps you you have some um, opinions or some suggestions and stuff. So our main objective here is to protect the ticket page. The ticket page is not protected by anything. You don't have to log in or anything, and it's meant just to be accessed by the person in question oh i actually yeah right so this is what it looks like from the customer perspective now the address is going to be stored separately so you, you'll have the button update address on this page so the address is safe but they can, there can still be a sensitive information here, like maybe the customer just wrote the address over here. That's fine, that's how we do it nowadays. And there might be some sensitive information over here. And obviously, well, we don't share email over here, but we share, um, do we, the name? Yeah. Oh no, that's you wrote. Yeah, so we don't even share the name over here which is fine but this cannot be open for the user hesk uses email address for verification so if you land on this page hesk will ask you for email but when we send you a link to the ticket your email address is stored within the URL as arguments or parameters or what have you so it's basically a get request and with a get request with content in it in this case email and URL is subject to login is subject to be semi public it's not subject to any kind of protection so your email address will end up in some logs and somewhere right not my logs the logs of your ISP the logs of you know wherever so what I figured is that we're not gonna use the address and uh, we're not gonna use the email address in the URLs but we still have to verify you so if you go to hesk just hesk page and click you know check the status of my ticket you are presented with an input for ticket id the tracking id and your email address and if those too much we display the ticket page for you but coming from the link you expect to click on the link and just be taken to the ticket page now what okay i got distracted by my son and i've lost my train of thought you see that's why that's why no session today 
because I can't I can't really focus. But what we're gonna use instead is on the t on the uh, ticket we're gonna use a token. So this is gonna be the token that you see in the address. So if anything is logged, it's that token, not your email address. Now that token is going to be generated every time we issue a new link to the ticket, right? So you so the only way to display the ticket is to use the most recent email sent from the system. If you use old email uh, or yeah, old link, so the token doesn't match. That is still fine. You're going to be redirected to the page where, because the ticket number is already in the URL, so you're only going to be redirected to the page to verify your email address. Once we verify your email address, then we take you to the um, to the page with new token, with current token, and that's pretty much it. Uh, the middleware is going to be guarding that. And and that's pretty much it. Um, so we're gonna have to build an identity verification page. That's gonna be the page that will retrieve the either both or one or your email or email and ticket number, ticket uh, tracking number. Uh, we have to create the middleware. We have to modify the table and. At the moment, we don't have anything that actually sends the um, that actually sends the notification. Uh, so we're gonna have to build some notification service service that maybe it's not gonna start emailing right away, but it's gonna at least generate tokens. And obviously, yeah. So we need to also add because this is what I got here. So if you're an admin, then do nothing. If you logged in and you're an admin, do nothing. Uh, but if you are logged in and you're not an admin, you're an employee, then we need to verify whether you are assigned to that ticket. Otherwise, you don't have access to that ticket. But for that, we also need the admin flag on users. So perhaps that will uh, will add that first before we implement all this. But in any case, this is the plan. Uh, I think it's gonna take maybe a couple hours to get all that done, depending on how much struggle there's gonna be with the front end. <laughs> um, but as far as the back end, that shouldn't be more than an hour. So that's going to be fun session. Technically, it's cybersecurity because we need to think of it as how would I exploit it, right? And I have several ways of exploiting Hask at the moment because of that email address in the links. Um, so I, I want to just make this much more secure. Hask is a kind of a legacy solution, so... Um, it's understandable, <laughs> but this is going to be new, so we don't want to we don't want to have uh, easy exploits on this system. Well, that'll do for now. I'm gonna go back to bed, and I shall see you guys hopefully tomorrow. And we're gonna code all this um, and get it working. <laughs> Thank you guys very much for watching, and I shall see you tomorrow.